Welcome to Japan Photo Explore, where we travel to and photograph amazing locations in Japan. Today, Ted and I are heading for snow in the extreme north of Japan. Blasted by icy winds from Siberia, this corner of Hokkaido is one of the coldest parts of Japan. Our journey starts at Tokyo's beautiful Haneda Airport. Many of Japan's domestic flights originate here, especially those going to smaller airports. It's the middle of winter, and today we're returning to Japan's most northerly city, Wakanai, on the island of Hokkaido. Korea is closer to Tokyo than Wakanai, any further north, and we'd be in Russia. We check in, and we're champing at the bit to board the plane but there's an announcement saying that our departure has been delayed due to weather. We're in Hanada Airport, uh, just checked in uh, for our flight to Wakanai, and unfortunately, or fortunately, it's very snowy there. And on check-in they said that there's some chance that uh, as we're flying there, the pilot may decide that we're coming back to Tokyo. But the thought of a plane turning back mid-flight makes me feel on edge it would seriously disrupt our trip. Flying over the main island of Honshu, the weather looks stunning. I cannot believe there could be any reason for the plane to turn back. Now we're above the northern tip of Honshu. It's covered in snow, but again, the weather is still perfect. And finally, the flight map indicates that we are flying over Hokkaido. Surely there's no turning back now. The weather looks bleak as we land at Wakanai Airport. But I cannot begin to tell you how happy we are to be oh, back. You beauty. There's not much daylight left. So we just wander around the foreshore near our hotel. Oh, well, fortunately the plane did land and we made it here. And even though this looks really snowy, it's not as snowy as it can get here. But it is cold. It is really cold. I have double thermals on. I've been here before, so I know what cold is. But this is really cold. Despite the weather, these hardy, dedicated souls are preparing for the local snow festival. Japan's major snow festival is in Sapporo, the capital of Hokkaido. Of course, Wakanai's festival doesn't reach these dizzying heights. But if the looks on the faces of the local kids is anything to go by, it's totally worth the effort. Both Ted and I are frozen to the core, and we're just not functioning properly. I'm struggling to move my lips. Time to call it a day. Plenty of snow fell overnight, but the forecast is for it to be clearing, so we're very optimistic that we're going to have a good day. From Wakanai, we're driving to the most northerly point of Japan, Cape Soya, looking for any other likely photographic spots on the way. Now let me introduce you to tetrapods, functional lumps of concrete that are used to build breakwaters. Not your typical photographic subject, but here, each winter, they form unique snow sculptures. While the tetrapods cast their spell on me, Ted is in urbex mode, captivated by nearby buildings that have seen better days. Uh, 
this is a cute little fishing port between Wakanai and Cape Sawyer and it's the kind of place that uh, that I look for as I'm driving along even though I haven't made any specific plans to, to shoot here uh, and it's really just worthwhile stopping having a look around especially when the light is this good uh, and seeing what you can come up with. We continue on to Japan's northerly tip, Cape Sawyer. On a clear day, you can see Russia from here. Since we'd already taken the obligatory Cape Sawyer photos last time we were here, and nothing is open, we continue on. At this time of the year, this quiet little village just past Cape Sawyer seems deserted. Combined with a deep layer of snow, it looks like a remote frontier because it is. While most buildings in Japan use materials that have natural or neutral colours, I find that in Hokkaido, people are more prepared to use vibrant colours on their buildings. In a sea of winter white, to me they are like bright islands of joy. We round off the day at our favourite restaurant chain in Hokkaido with a distinctly non-Japanese name. As well as your grilled main course, you get access to the buffet which includes curry and rice, a huge range of salads, as well as dessert. More overnight snow has fallen, and the wind is picking up. We decided to photograph near the foreshore, which may not have been the wisest move, because we're getting the full blast of the winds from Siberia. Literally. Despite wearing every layer of clothing we have, we are still freezing. We can only take this for so long, so we decide to go slightly inland, just by a couple of streets, to get away from the wind. It's definitely better here, but I think our court temperature is already too low to make this comfortable. And then we see this oasis, not your typical Japanese convenience store. This is Nikot, a combination of supermarket, hardware, homeware and convenience store. We had to check it out. I managed to take one photo of the panorama of snacks before my camera fogged up. For some reason, we had an irresistible urge to stay there and keep shopping. We stocked up on these climate appropriate socks and these stylish neck gaiters that provided a new sensation. A warm face, sort of. Driving a little bit further, we see this. Now, I've been carrying on about how cold it is, but look, when the wildlife doesn't want to stay outside, it's definitely too cold for us. Back in town, we look for a place for lunch. There's a brightly coloured restaurant building just behind the railway station that promises to deliver some joy. Prawn tempura set with miso soup, rice and hot tea. Joy indeed.
Feeling warm and full, we brace ourselves for our final shoot here. The weather is still challenging. By the way, if you're wondering about this elegant structure, it's Wakkanai's North Breakwater Dome. It protects the port from windstorms and waves and serves as a multi-function recreation space. Completed in 1936, the innovative design was by a 26-year-old council engineer who thought that his boss's design was rubbish. We've had a range of weather conditions in Wakkanai from glorious sunshine to a full-on blizzard. Does the weather make any difference to the photos? Of course. For me, all the inclement weather you suffer is worth it, if you can harness some of that to add atmosphere and drama to your images. This is Ted's second winter trip to Wakanai and my third. Why do we keep coming back? Extreme North, extreme cold, extreme adventure. The area feels remote. It is remote. The people are welcoming and the accommodation is first rate. The extreme North of Japan is our happy place and we want to share it with you with more videos in this series. We look forward to your questions and comments. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to help our channel grow, click the like button. To be notified of new Japan Photo Explore stories, please subscribe and make sure to click on the bell icon.